Thank you for joining our Bridging the Gap podcast. We're here to spread the message of the Bride of Christ, answer questions, and provide you with real, practical application of the Word of God through the inspired teachings of Rev. Bernice R. Hicks. Be blessed. Hello, and thanks for joining us today on our Bridging the Gap podcast. Today we are continuing on a series of discussions about finding Jesus in the details. Uh, Once again, we still have with us Abe Figueroa, pastor of the Christ Gospel Church in Mansfield, Ohio. Uh, Abe, you've been with us for several episodes now, and we've been discussing this idea of seeing Jesus in the details regarding uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. And we saw in the last uh, episode that there was sin offering, peace offering, and whole burnt offering blood. And we ended that discussion by posing the question, how do we as believers continue applying the blood daily in our lives after we've accepted the blood during salvation? Um, how, how do we reconcile that, that thought? Uh, well, how would you like to, to start off with, with answering that for our, for our believers here watching? You know, that, that is a great question. That's a great question, you know, especially because the New Testament says that the Old Testament blood wasn't good enough, and that's why we needed the New Covenant blood through Jesus Christ, which is once and for all, and we don't have priests now that are daily giving blood, and uh, and Hebrews explains that the reason why there's no daily giving of blood is because this blood is so much better. And so it's easy to read that and assume, okay, well, I asked God to forgive me of my sins once, his blood is better. I don't have to be like an Old Testament priest asking for blood every single day. So I ask once, and we're good, and that's it. The problem with that is Jesus' very own words. So when we get to the book of Revelation, and you don't have to get that far in the the scriptures to find this, but this is just a great example. Um, Every church, maybe except for one, just about every church at least, is is told in the book of Revelation that they need to repent. Uh, they need to turn from something that they're doing. Now, they're saved. They're Christians. They're a church. He, he's not saying they're not saved, but he is saying that they need to continue to repent. So what does this mean for us? This means that repentance is something eat with the better blood, with the perfect blood that's offered only once. It's something that we daily participate in, in time. Uh, it, 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 so in it, so. We are not saying that we have to ask God to forgive us of our sins every day because the blood wears off. But instead, our spiritual life is an onward progression in relationship with him. And just like any real relationship, we find places where we come head to head with the will of the person we're having a relationship with. And when we come head to head with God, our head's always wrong. And we find that we are we always need to subordinate ourselves under him. And at that place, yes. we need what we might say as fresh sin offering blood, if you will, to allow us and help us, empower us, if you will, to subordinate our head under his and find ourselves more deeply united with Jesus. Yes, that's such a great key point. And, and I just want to pause here in the middle of this discussion, just to make sure that everyone is tracking with us. So when we're talking about these believers over in Revelation who are part of the church, so we can't deny that they've asked Jesus to come into the heart, but yet they're being asked to repent. So we know because the Bible has shown us that sin separates us from God. And we as Christians, even though we're believers and have laid hold of the blood of Christ to save us from death and hell, we still have have days where we get upset, where we're bothered, where we're, you know, maybe complaining about something that did or you know that bothered us or didn't go right or something like that. And all of those things are sin. Yeah. And so we have to be forgiven of those sins every day because every day we're going to make mistakes and we're going to fall down. And and I think that to give us as we've been discussing an Old Testament and New Testament counterpart, we can think of the journey from Egypt to Canaan's land that the children of Israel went on because their first uh, experience 
was God asking them to put the blood on their doorpost and lentils before they left the land of Egypt? And they did that and they were saved from yeah. the death angel, similarly to how we're saved from the penalty of death and hell yes. as New Testament believers. However, that did not end and was not the finale you know, to their blood experience because as soon as they got into the wilderness, it wasn't long after that, that God then gave Moses the instructions for the tabernacle and laid out this uh, what we would call ceremonial law of offering sacrifices. And so even though they had had an initial blood experience way back in uh, the 12th chapter of Exodus, later on, we still see the blood needing to be applied, but it was not because the first salvation, as it were, blood wasn't good enough. Yeah. It was because God wanted them to have this new union. And we can see many references of that in the Old Testament, even in Isaiah, uh, the first chapter, you know, he's talking to the children of Israel, the people of Israel, the Jewish nation, God's people saying, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, you know, they shall be white, they shall be white as snow. And so we see then that even though these believers have the Lord in their heart, they're, they're not, they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And so all of those daily sins then need a daily covering. That's right. That's right. And it's also important to recognize that we're not talking about a salvation experience from the penalty of sin every day. We're not saying yes. that if you, if you ask Jesus in your heart today and then tomorrow you get hit by a truck before you've asked for more sin offering blood that you're going to hell. That's absolutely not what we're talking about. We're talking about a developing relationship with Jesus, which leads us to the yes. other bloods that we've talked about in the last episode as well. Yes, and I, I think that's so vital for our understanding as believers. For those listening and those watching, try this thought experiment. Um, imagine that you are homeless and had tattered clothes ripped up, you know, just in, in shambles. And someone out of the kindness of their heart gives you a brand new set of clothes from top to bottom, head to foot. And so you've got a white top, you know, white bottoms, white shoes, everything solid white, completely white. It's not going to take you very long just living in the world before that white outfit begins to get a little stained and tarnished. And you're going to then need to take it and, and put it in the washing machine to, to get it cleansed. And so when Jesus saves us and cleanses us from our sins, he has saved us and taken that penalty of, of death and hell away. But as we've said in this discussion, it's not going to take us too long because we're human to come to the realization that there are still things in our lives that are going to require the blood, whether it's sin offering blood and, and we have an attitude and, and something, you know, we need to deal with, or maybe it's whole burn offering blood that we need to apply. And God is, is calling you to maybe walk more closely and be separate unto him uh, than you have been in prior days. And there's a blood for that that can be applied Absolutely. to you in, in your own spiritual life. I think that's so important and so beautiful. Absolutely. All of the bloods that we are talking about are designed to help increase our relationship with Jesus. Um, so often in our conversations in Christendom, Blood is only used a, as a way of entering into a relationship with God, and we fail to recognize that it is the means by which we sustain that relationship with God and deepen it as well. So, For example, the whole burnt offering blood, like we said last time, is about dedicating uh, completely to the Lord. And we're either going to try to do that in the strength of our own will, or we recognize the poverty of our own will and say, I need the power and surrender that's within Jesus as a humble lamb to come into my life as well through that whole burnt offering blood. And I want to be surrendered and humbled like he was. Please, God, give me a portion of that whole burnt offering blood for the thing that I need to dedicate to you. And that does not have to be something that's sinful, dedicating myself away from sin. It can be a life that is just more fully engaged in Jesus. That's why it's uh, that one in particular, you know, at, in terms of details, 
uh, it was when it was burnt, it was a sweet smell um, yes. uh, to the nostrils of God. It pleased God to smell the sacrifice of one wholly dedicated unto him. And as people who don't want to just be saved from hell, but want to live a life that is a pleasant savor to God, a pleasant smell, um, all the more reason why we would want to ask God to give us that portion of blood. You know, and also uh, yes. when we talk about the peace offering blood, that's the that's the union offering blood, if you will. Um, uh, like we said in Colossians, uh, having made peace through the blood of the cross, he has brought all things unto himself, reconciling them unto him. And even something as simple as daily wanting to be more and more deeply united to Jesus is impossible to do without a specific kind of blood helping empower that experience. Now, of course, I'm not saying that every time someone has had a, uh, a deep union with Jesus and didn't ask for the peace offering blood, that it wasn't even real. God's too gracious for that. He doesn't need us to say the special incantations to do what he needs to do uh, to bring his children closer to him. True. But when we know the details, we can actively engage the details in greater ways than before. And then we can yes. see how we can be more responsible in growing, as Peter says, in the grace that's been given us. And what the what is the analogy of the white clothes of forgiveness that you gave earlier, but an example of receiving grace and then growing in that grace, growing in that relationship with God, growing in that cleanliness, growing in a life dedicated to God. And we have still, I mean, I, you, I'm sure you know, we've barely touched the surface of g the details that are inside of sin, whole, and peace offering blood. But, you know, just as a little example, like how much more we have for, uh, uh, how much more we have in our lives right now, the potential because of these bloods. There's so much latent potential that we have to serve yes. God all the more. If we're just willing to say, all right, I'm going to face these details meet God in those details, and then engage God in those details. You know, that that's so wonderful how, how you put that. And there are several things that we could, you know, just venture off into. Uh, I think first and foremost, what jumps to mind is that when we understand the magnitude, the detail, even down to what I like to call the molecular level of the thing, and seeing the sin offering, peace offering, whole burn offering, blood, it's not something, um, as you said in the last episode, that we've just conjured up. It's there. Yeah. And once we see that, then it gives us such a new sense of gratitude yeah. and appreciation for Calvary. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus, you know, at the communion table, all he said was, this is my blood. And that was it. But that doesn't mean that there aren't still these other facets to the blood that have always been there. And I think that that's so, it's so amazing that we can have this, this newfound gratitude uh, about Calvary, about the, the death that Jesus died and the fact that he even gave his blood uh, at all. You know, um, there are so many, so many things that we could go into. And, and I think it was a wonderful way how you put the, uh, the different, applications of sin offering, peace offering, and whole burn offering. One thing that kind of came to mind was with, with Noah and the, the whole burn offering, how that as soon as he got off the yeah. ark, here he had been, you know, taking care of these animals for well over a year. And the first thing he does, the first thing God asks of him as soon as he gets off the ark is to give, you know, this offering. And he makes an altar and so he's saying, God, yes, I've shepherded these animals for over a year, but they're not mine. They're not my possession. I want to surrender them to you. I'm not attached to them. And so often, you know, we get attached to things. And, and like you were saying, it's just so, it's so wonderful and refreshing to know that there is a blood for every aspect of our relationship with God, where we feel that we're falling short, whether it's sin, whether it's a new need for surrender, whether it's a new union and to draw closer to him. It's so wonderful and assuring to know that we can have that and that Jesus gave us blood for that. And we're, uh, we're blessed beyond exactly. measure to have those gifts. Is there anything else that exactly. you'd like to add before we close this conversation? 
Yeah, you know, yeah, like what you were saying about Noah is so important because this is how uh, all of us can take the principles that we're just hearing basically like little seeds that are going to grow in our study life and personal life with Jesus and take it a little bit further. So with Noah, the earth was cleansed, and then the offering that he gives, that Hebrew word, is the whole burnt offering. He rededicates the survivors back to the Lord. He rededicates the surviving animals and humans back to Jesus, back to God the Father. Um, and so the key here is that you can see a principle that may, uh, continues all the way along uh, throughout Scripture, which is that there's always the cleansing of sin first and then dedication. And so when I'm going to apply, uh, if I want to apply uh, whole burnt offering blood in my life, before I even get there, I need to go through that Noah principle, which you see everywhere. It's not just a Noah principle, but since we're talking about it, where I'm allowing that sin offering blood to cleanse me in a place that I'm not dedicated. And then after that, I'm asking him to dedicate me through his whole burnt offering blood. And then after that, I'm asking him to unite me to his peace offering blood. So I have a new union and dedication that comes after the cleansing. And when you see that pattern, then when you see it through the scriptures, it affirms that kind of spiritual relationship, that spiritual pattern, and uh, we are all the more convinced that we're not reading over the text or too far into the text because we see the pattern staying the same and repeating in different kinds of biblical stories and examples all the way through scripture. Yes, that's so remarkable. You know, uh, it, it really leaves you awestruck at how all of these wonderful principles of truth are just so carefully threaded throughout the Word of God. And yeah. if we're going to have a new union with God, we first have to be cleansed from that sin. We have to be then rededicated and re-separated, so to speak, unto God and say, God, there's some things that I I feel like I'm, you know, I'm hanging on to. I, I need you to separate those things from me. That's the, basically, as we're saying, the gist of the whole burnt offering blood. And then once God has done that through his blood, then you say, okay, now that I'm free from these things I've, I've been attached to, now invite me more into you. Let me have the stronger union with you through this peace offering blood. I, I, there's so many things we could get into. Uh, yeah. I, I think that principle alone is so beautiful because a lot of times we want the union, but we're not willing to apply whole burnt offering blood to, to remove ourselves from these attachments. But that new union can only come once there's been that whole burnt offering blood and we've we've rededicated we've we've re you yes. know, uh, uh, attached ourselves to God and removed those things that are kind of hindering and hampering and inhibiting our our spiritual relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that's right and that's exactly why in the first episode i was saying how just the details of the blood has radically transformed my relationship with Jesus in almost every facet um, just the little things we've talked about, like you said, they just build upon each other, and there's principle after principle within, and then it's affirmed through the Scripture, and then it builds our spiritual life. It truly does. Jesus. It truly does. It is remarkable. So let's bring things back full circle. At the beginning of the podcast series, I asked the question, how does a camel and a sheep relate to your spiritual walk with Christ? Well, the answer is that one was clean and one was unclean. So what does that have to do with our spiritual relationship with Christ? Well, we don't have time to get into that, but we'll answer it on a later podcast. We hope you've enjoyed this discussion about finding Jesus in the details with Abe and I. And if you've been watching and you've been listening and you want to know more about Jesus, if you feel that tug on your heart, to invite him in as your personal savior, then we ask that you pray this short prayer with us. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross. I ask you to come into my heart and save me from my sin. If you've done that and you've prayed that short prayer with us, you have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and you have accepted him as your personal savior. We hope that you've enjoyed today's podcast on Bridging the Gap, and we look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for listening to today's Bridging the Gap podcast. 
We hope the Word of God has blessed you and will empower you to continue in your journey ahead. For more information on today's podcast, check out the referenced material on our CGC app or on www.cgcset.org.